Good evening. We appreciate you coming tonight and watching us on TV, and we look forward to your comments and input as we go on with this um, commission. We are here because the town council has asked the Conservation Commission and charged us to draw up an open space management plan. Uh, the commission, the Conservation Commission, is made up of seven citizens of Cape Elizabeth picked by the town council for two year term. We also this year have a town council liaison, and the town planner also sits on all our meetings. Uh, the Conservation Commission is a steward of over 1,100 acres owned by the town. Um, all town lands are open to the public for their enjoyment, and we have miles and miles of trails. Um, and as this commission, as a commission, we meet once a month. We also have trail days once a month, and some of us are in the field every week and weekend. And we make new trails, we build bridges, we build walkways. Recently, we just built um, boat racks. We maintain the land, we hang signs. And whenever you see a sign that looks green and round like this, that is Cape Elizabeth land. Um, it is an extremely dedicated group, and they spend hours and hours on protecting this land. Um, right now, I'd like everybody to introduce themselves, and we'll start down at the end. My name is John Plenitzek, and I'm in the Old Hurst neighborhood of the uh, Stone Gated and Lovett Field Trails. Uh, my name is Jessica Sullivan. I'm the member of the town council who is a liaison to the Open Space Management Plan, and I live on uh, Cranbrook Drive. Hi, my name is Mike Duddy. Uh, I'm a member of the Conservation Commission and have been with the commission now for my third term, going on about 10 years. Um, I live on Crescent View Avenue over by uh, Crescent Beach. My name is Dina DeSena and I'm chairperson. I live on Wainwright Drive. Um, this is my second term. And that's it. And I'm Marty Blair and I live in the Oakhurst section of Cape Elizabeth. Okay. Um, I'd also like you to introduce yourself uh, or anybody out, out here. Okay. My name is Rick Wright. I'm the Central News Paper. Okay. Um, now we're going to have Jessica Sullivan do a review. Uh, thanks, Dina. Um, <clears throat> what I would like to do is just briefly review the, uh, the Town Council authorization for the Open Space Management Plan. Um, the Town Council authorized the Open Space and Greenbelt Management Committee um, through its adoption of this charge on April 12, 2010. And I'll just briefly read the, the uh, top three sections. The charge, to prepare for Town Council consideration a plan for management of town open space and greenbelt trails, except for Fort Williams, which already has an established management structure. An open space and greenbelt management plan committee. The members of the Conservation Commission will join with the Town Council liaison, Councillor Sullivan, to form the committee. And also development of the management plan. The town of Cape Elizabeth now owns close to 10% of the total acreage of the town as open space with legal public access. Much of the land includes greenbelt trails. The open space and trails are highly valued by town residents and significantly contribute to community character. Both the quantity of open space and the use of greenbelt trails have progressed to the level where a management plan is needed to cohesively guide the town in its stewardship responsibilities. Thank you. And then Marnie and Jessica are going to talk about um, the open space. Yeah. And you know, Dina, there, there was, may I add something else? Sure. I forgot to mention here, I'd written some notes. Um, the uh, charge, in our charge and authorization, we are planning to present a management plan to the town council by the end of 2010. Um, and I would like to mention that um, with all of this, 
the greatest uh, impediment to any of this is cost. And uh, I would like to, again, take the opportunity, D Dina just mentioned this, but we have such incredibly um, dedicated volunteers. And because of these individuals, uh, the cost of what has been done to date and hopefully what will be done in the future has been incredibly reduced by the, the hard work and dedication of these folks. Thanks. Thank you. The open space management plan is going to address two types of properties in Cape Elizabeth town owned in fee, meaning we own it outright, and also properties over which the town holds a conservation easement. And on our map, um, we have those designated. We are going to give a brief overview of some of the larger properties that will come under the open space management plan. There are other public properties in Cape Elizabeth, owned by the state or owned by the land trust. They will not be um, covered under the management plan. We're talking about town-owned space or um, public land over which the town has is the holder of a conservation easement. Okay. So from north to south, I guess, was the way we were going to approach go it, ahead. right? Yeah. Um, looking at the, we're going to draw your attention to the bigger properties, but um, we have copies of the map for you all as well. Stonegate and um, Lovett Woods. Lovett Woods is 18 acres. Stonegate is 77 acres. And they are connected to Robinson Woods, which is another 81 acres. Robinson Woods is one of the ones over which we hold an easement. So that provides a fairly large block of public owned land in this part of town. We already mentioned that Fort Williams is adjacent to that parcel, but won't be part of the open space management plan because although it is town owned, it has its own management plan and its own commission that works um, to, to manage Fort Williams Park. Um, we also have a very large parcel here at Gold Crest, um, which is uh, 96 acres. We have um, a section down around Great Pond, Great, near Great Pond condos, nine and a half acres. We have trails down there. We have, um, let's see, where's this? We have, of course, land and property around the school campus as well, which is 40 acres, approximately. Um, <clears throat> we have a very large portion over here at Winnick Woods, um, which is off of Sawyer Road. And let's see, that's 71 acres. And that um, connects or will connect or can connect down to Cross Hill area, which is um, an, a trails easement that we hold. And I'd like to take um, the opportunity now that we're starting to talk about trails on our properties. As we mentioned before, um, public access is important on our properties. We have been engaged as a commission in a project to have all of the trails that exist um, GPSed and have a, um, an accurate trail map designed. That's what you see on those um, sheets over there. They, at this point, look like lines on a piece of white paper, but what will happen is they'll be overlaid to um, a map more like this that, that shows streets and some of the topography. And then they'll be on the town's website. And so if you want to come to Cape Elizabeth and do some hiking or find a trail or go out on Great Pond um, using our access to Great Pond, you'll be able to download the information and print yourself a trail map. So that's an initiative that we've already begun to engage in that is really part of our open space management plan is how to provide trails and information about those trails so that they're accessible. Um, we've been working very hard on keeping the trails maintained, um, which is another piece of our management plan is the, the type of trails we want to have who would be able to use them and how we maintain them. There were a couple of other properties that um, we wanted to mention down um, near, this is the Crescent Beach Street Park, of course that's not ours, but down in that area we have St. Bart's and Highlands 
and um, Highlands is 22 acres, and I'm not sure about the St. Bart's piece. I think that might be part of that. Um, what's interesting about some of these pieces is that our town planner is extremely um, zealous or committed to having parcels of town land be included when development goes in um, to areas. So she'll, she works very hard to, to get us easements over some of the development properties or um, in some cases to maybe arrange for some transfers. And having pieces down in this area, you can see it's, um, it's a bit of a goal because we don't have as much coverage there of town-owned land. So this is something, this is a, can be a focus area for us. Okay. Is that it? I think so. We would want to mention Wheelback Ridge, I think. Okay. We have also a section here, Wheelback Ridge. I don't know what the acreage is exactly, but we, we do have some property and trails through there. I was out there this morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's okay. Unless, does any, have we left out any significant parcels that anyone else is aware of? No, but um, one of the goals was to have land where you could someday walk perhaps the whole town of Cape Elizabeth. And that was one reason of having those nice open spaces down below where you go from them to Great Pond where we have easements and then you could cross over into Goldcrest. And literally it will be miles of trails yeah, that people can up. enjoy and go all the way up. Mm -hmm. And even though they don't all look connected on here because this is showing town land, there are um, sometimes connectors or trails that you can pick up from Whaleback going this direction or going that direction or from um, Robinson Woods going down here. I mean, there are lots of little other trails too, so mm -hmm. I think we're working towards that. Are there any questions for us? Thank you very much, ladies. And um, now Mike Duddy will talk to us about examples of issues that might come up during this process. Thanks, Tina. Uh, we've been at this um, open, space, open space planning and trail development, development and maintenance for a long time here in Cape Elizabeth. We've had um, a couple of vision plans um, directing where we hope new trails ultimately will go in and guiding the town in terms of uh, open space acquisition. Um, and people have been using the trails for a long time, but the town has never attempted yet to draft a management plan that talks about operationally how do we use and maintain these trails, how do we essentially um, mediate between different um, trail user groups um, when some issues arise, uh, and those sorts of things. And that's what we hope to address in this management plan. Now, um, there aren't many people here live in the audience, so to speak, so I'm hoping that the folks watching on television um, will think to uh, use the uh, email addresses on the town website to send in comments and so forth regarding some of the issues that I'll mention. And I'm not going to try to canvas the issues, but just give people some things to think about. Um, so for instance, um, I think in the experience of a lot of people in town, the, tra the Greenbelt trails are a terrific place to walk the dogs. Um, and typically, um, the people who are walking their dogs are doing it with the dogs off leash. Now, we haven't had many issues with that, frankly, because it's a pretty dog-friendly um, experience when, when your animal has a lot of room to roam. But we have had some folks raise some issues, in particular with having dogs off leash around trailheads that are close to people's um, homes and streets. And so if um, people in town have thoughts on whether there should be included in this management plan a definitive statement um, around dog um, um, access to the trails on or off leash near trailheads or not, we hope they'll provide comments on that. That's, that's one category of issues. Um, another category of issues has to do with mountain bikes. Um, the growth of a connected trail system in Cape Elizabeth has led to some terrific mountain biking opportunities. Um, in particular, um, the section in the northwest 
part of uh, Cape Elizabeth, which is um, comprised of Winnick Woods, um, Cross Hill, and a parcel owned by the Land Trust. Um, there are several miles of interconnected trails there, which um, uh, the Conservation Commission has built. And then there are actually a lot of other mountain bike trails just bisecting the properties. Um, we are all, or many of us, are trail bike um, advocates. We bike the trails ourselves. We like to, to see folks out there on mountain bikes using the trails. But the mountain bikes provide a level of impact on the trail that purely pedestrian traffic doesn't, which leads to the need for more aggressive and continuous maintenance. Now, local trail bike clubs have been very enthusiastic in terms of providing volunteer support to help us out maintaining the trails. Um, and we think that we've gotten a good start in trying to leverage those volunteer efforts from uh, the, uh, the local trail bike groups. Um, but if people have thoughts on mountain bikes, that they want to definitively keep the trails open to mountain bikes, or not, or have some sections under some um, different arrangement, would like to hear from the using public. Um, the same can be said for a relatively small group of users, but the folks who are horseback riding on the trails. Uh, much like with the mountain bikes, um, the horses that use the trails um, also have a greater impact on the, the surface soils than do typical pedestrians. Um, is that an issue or is it not? Is there a horse um, contingency um, in town that wants to see the trails maintained at the level that um, horseback riding um, is going to be a sustainable activity? Or is that something for which there isn't a whole lot of interest? We'd love to hear more on that. Um, we um, have from time to time got to get involved in various neighborhoods and with um, individuals in town um, because of local um, residents encroaching on the trail, um, taking it upon themselves to either clear vegetation away, plant lawns over, up to, or across greenbelt trails, put fences up um, across greenbelt trails, put plantings that discourage the public from thinking it's a greenbelt trail, and those sorts of things. Are people experiencing um, their own problems or frustrations with encroachments? Do residents who live in town have their own uh, comments um, pertaining to what they ought to be able to do adjacent to a green belt trail or not? Would love to hear some input on that. Um, hours of usage. Um, there is no guideline um, anywhere for, in the town for when people can use trails or when they can't. Um, sometimes people say, well, only during um, you know, normal daytime hours. But there are lots of bird watchers who like to get out before sunrise and after sunset. Um, there are hunters that like to be out prior to sunrise and after sunset, getting into position and uh, getting off the trail. People who like to walk the trail by headlight and look at um, uh, what they can find at night or just turn the headlamps off and look at the stars. Have there been any issues or problems with people using the trails after daytime? Um, those are the kinds of issues um, that we think about, that we've heard about, uh, that we want to address potentially in a management plan. And so for the people watching uh, on television, if they don't come down tonight, I hope they send in their email comments or, or phone comments. Thank you, Mike. That was really good. Now we would like, would you like to make a comment at all on any, anything you've heard or thoughts you have? Um, I guess we should give her the microphone. Yeah, thank you. Um, just one. And, and I'm, I'm sorry, just for the TV, your name. And My name's Sheila Wellhan. I live at 24 Rocky Hill Road. Um, just in thinking about the priorities, um, is at, in, um, increasing access one of, I don't see that up there, but maybe I'm not, in, or you know, encouraging access or increasing access, is that part of the management plan or is that some, um, a part of the management plan? Do you mean um, purchasing prop more properties um, or? And access, pro um, you know, maybe publicizing it, let, letting people know. Um, and I didn't know if that might come under mapping or um, 
you know, letting people know there's so many great trails out there. There are, and I think um, th that has been sort of a problem. We, while we have this map, it is a little bit hard to read, and we've redone a new map. Mm -hmm. um, but on our website, um, I think um, Marty mentioned it and Jessica, we will have this overlay program. I mean, you can say on the website, I want to walk six miles in a trail and I'm looking for this type of trail in Cape Elizabeth. And it will come up and it will show you where to enter, how to get on, where you can, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. ultimately it might say you can take a breather here or get off there. But right. if that is all in coming, <clears throat> and um, it will be a fantastic asset. But we do have some information on the website now. Mm -hmm. And um, anybody else have a comment on that? Um, I, I think it's, it's been one of the top priorities in the past year to, to two years for the Conservation Commission to improve signage mm -hmm. and mapping. In, in the trails. Signs on the trails themselves yeah. so that um, people who um, get to a trailhead, for instance, know where the entrance is, know how to get on the trail, and then once you're on the trail, how to follow it. Um, but in addition to that, this whole effort that you begin to see over here in terms of mapping the trails um, accurately with GPS so that we can then de develop large maps that you can take with you out into the field is a huge priority for us um, because we want to encourage people to explore on their own. And I know for sure that I've heard comments that people are reluctant to go very far on the trails because they don't know where they go. They're afraid of getting um, turned around or confused. There are frequently informal trails um, that are just there from neighborhood usage or whatever, and people don't know, you know what's official trail, what's not. So mm -hmm. we are really trying to make gains in that area. I get lost all the time. It doesn't bother me. But... <laughs> yep. On some of the larger properties, we have purchased these large boxes uh, with glass in front with trail maps so it says you are here turn left or right and we have really put a lot of these up in the last since Christmas and we've just been putting them everywhere um, but it is a big priority we'll still work on that mm -hmm. thank you very much um, <laughs> I think um, Mike Duddy said to um, our friends on television to please comment and, and send your comments to the town planner. She will give them to us uh, with any ideas and thoughts, um, anything that will help us out to make, to make this plan a better plan will be much appreciated. We are also hoping to possibly have another form sometime in mid-fall, and um, by then people will be have more ideas and will come. Um, and I think that's about it. Does anyone else have any parting thoughts here, Jessica? Uh, no, I think um, things have been covered well, and um, I I would um, just reinforce what Mike Duddy said that being fairly new to the, the uh, commission itself and so forth, there has been a great deal of talk of the importance of mapping. And this is going to be tremendous. Um, this will be a tremendous asset for citizens that just want to get on, a, on the town website, feel like they don't want to go for a walk, what would fit their time frame, where is it, how to get on, how to get off, as well as you know, the, the uh, paper maps that will be available in some, in some of the boxes. And, <clears throat> um, so that's going to be terrific because I think that Ms. Wellahan would answer, you know, to a great deal your question about access and user friendliness. So, anyway, thanks. Um, in closing, I just wanted to tell everyone that we meet, the commission meets once a month, the first Tuesday uh, at 7 o'clock on the second floor. The first hour of our meeting is our general business and our general work. You're, of course, the public's welcome to come. Um, but the second half of our meeting, hopefully at 8 o'clock, will be about this management, open management plan. And we welcome uh, the public, and they can make brief comments. So look forward to seeing people. Yes, ma'am. I did have a comment. I was waiting for, um, I was waiting for you to outline the public comment format. So um, I did want to ask you, um, 
want to, I don't um, give my feedback, but I very much hope that the default for dogs, I comment about dogs, yes. is, um, is voice control. Voice control, um, I, would, I would suggest that instead of using the language of off-leash, that you use voice control. Um, it, you know, it, it, everyone, it, people don't, I think people have a different, um, it, it's not clear when you have a sign that says off-leash, mm -hmm. it's not clear to everyone that their dog should Can you give that to her again? I hate to have you repeat that because it's a very good comment. And if you would kindly do that again with the microphone for the TV. I just I wanted to suggest I, I'm hoping that you keep the, the default for the trails. Um, the dogs are allowed to be off leash, but I would suggest that you use the language voice control rather than off leash. There's just a different a, you know a, a different expectation, a different message conveyed. Mm -hmm. um, that what, what the Kickflips with Land Trust uses is they say um, voice control and insight um, or leash. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, I think that conveys that, you know, to, to most people, mm -hmm. that if your dog isn't under voice control, use a leash. Um, and so that's, I mean, it's, it's a wonderful, mm -hmm. um, it's a wonderful experience for a lot of people, mm -hmm. but it's also a responsibility. And I'm hoping that we can continue to enjoy. That's a very good point. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and also, um, as the, it makes sense to me, since so many of your lands do about the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust, that you have a similar you know, default. So, mm -hmm. that's. Well, thank you very much. Okay. And with that, I think. We will close the meeting, and we look forward to people coming by the first Tuesday of the month to our meetings. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you.